my name is Anthony Ochoa. I just turned uh, 52 years old. Born and raised in uh, Los Angeles, California. I lived here all my life. And now on SRN, The Moods of Sunday Night with Anthony Ochoa, distributed by the Salem Radio Network. Welcome to The Moods of Sunday Night. And I've been with Salem for, uh, for a good chunk of my life, 22 years, as an um, audio designer. The Moods of Sunday Night is an end of the weekend program that'll help you look back so you might see the up and the coming. One of the things I love to do each summer, uh, I would take a, a one-week vacation and drive down to uh, Ensenada, Baja California, Mexico, and spend a week down there in the same hotel that my family's been staying at for about 40 years. That's something that used to bring me so much happiness I can't do. I used to go to restaurants with friends, sometimes with a whole bunch of friends. Uh, can't do that anymore. Uh, friends and family keep on saying, when you get better, you'll be able to do that again. And I said, well, I hope so. And he's an audio engineer and also a radio talk show host. And it's been working for like 35 years. And just less than a year ago, suddenly, and everything sounds so loud and distorted uh, to him. Um, I just went into uh, the ear surgeon because I had a little bit of a fluttering in my right ear. She thought that uh, I'd had some kind of virus and, and we both discussed hyperacusis. Hyperacusis is defined as a oversensitivity of certain sounds. Now, they don't have to be loud sounds. They could be regular sounds. Like, you know, you're walking on the street, you hear the cars going by, you hear the freeway, you hear the trains, you hear people honking the horns. We don't think about that stuff when we're doing it. We just walk through it. But someone who has hyperacusis hears these sounds that we usually don't hear, that we ignore, hears them as very loud and painful sounds. It's relatively newly developed or discovered uh, a hearing disorder, you know, roughly it's a fact of about 10 or 5 percent of the general population. A lot of people have it, but they're on the mild side. They are not even aware. With severe hyperacusis, some people will even cry or have a panic attack. Okay, and this is, you know, shown that it can be caused by loud sounds or overexposure to environmental sounds. I, I speak in a very low, somewhat monotone type of voice, because if I raise my voice too much, I hear my own voice distorting in my own ears. Whenever people pronounce um, S or ST at the end of the word, like if they're gonna say most or toast, that ST is very sharp. And what it does when I hear it, it sends the pain receptors in my teeth and in my gums, the very organ that pr pronounces these syllables, I get pain right around the teeth and right around the gums every time I hear those words. Yeah, the rain hitting the cement was kind of loud. Ir irritating, you know, just uh, intrusive. And I, I would think back of how they used to sound a year and a half ago when it was, it was loud, but it, it didn't bother me. Only after we understand the causes for these uh, uh, disorders uh, do we have a chance to treat these conditions effectively. He tested my auditory nerve, and he found some uh, synchronous problems in the auditory nerve 
that could point a little bit to it's a nerve problem, but we're just not sure yet. The use of earplugs in treating a patient with a hyperacusis is a little bit controversial. Right? But imagine if you already have a sensitivity to sound, right? The earplugs will reduce, attenuate you know, the sound by roughly 20 to 30 dB. So further reduce the input to the brain, right? And, and uh, you know, one theory says maybe your brain has to even work harder to compensate for the reduced input, right? And therefore make the hyperacusis even worse. This is, looks, it almost looks like a hearing aid. Mm -hmm. And when people see them on my ear, they think it's a hearing aid. They think that Anthony's hard of hearing. Oh. But it's the complete opposite. This is what they call a wearable sound generator. There's a little battery in there that you change every couple of weeks. And the way to start and stop it is by just taking it out and put it back in. Oh. And there's like a little speaker. It's very tiny. And what this does, it emits broadband sound, like white noise. Mm -hmm. All day long all I hear time. this. Yeah, all the time. Okay. I hear this in my ear. This right here is sort of my uh, dream audio system. I have a, a, a mixing panel here, a retro mixing panel with, with uh, knob dials that brings in all the analog audio. I've got a whole equalization panel, a four-way VU meter, um, a, a dual CD deck with the drawers over here, a processor, a tuner, a distribution amp, preamps. Um, right over here I've got uh, vintage compression from the early 80s, vintage uh, graphic equalization from the 70s. As you can see, there's nothing there. Mm. I had to sell everything. Why? Because I can't hit listen to it anymore. I'm still selling pieces of it in there. I spent, you know, thousands of dollars on something that I thought was going to make me happy. And it did for a short while. But then sometimes just looking at it, um, psychological response. No, I cannot do the Sunday night program anymore. I could work with wiring, I could work with cabling. I've been known by our company as the man with the golden ears. If, if we have to give something a, a listening test, I was the only one, or I was, the main person they sent in. I can't do that anymore. And it's uh, debilitating. It's, it's been completely stripped away from me. You know, my 35 years of uh, perfecting my talent has just been completely obliterated. Because there's a lot of people suffering, silent suffering with hyperacusis. People that have barricaded themselves in the cellars of their home or upstairs, close all the windows and the shades because they cannot stand to tolerate any kind of sound. Those people are hurting. Those people are dying. And our media and our awareness campaigns don't talk about them. And they're forgotten people. I have a good friend of mine who's had it for almost uh, two decades. And my heart goes out to him every single day. It pains me to think about how long he's had it, but he does. And uh, there are many times I think to myself, um, and I pray a lot that God would heal me. But when I look at my friend, I ask that you know, God would heal him first. I could wait. Because I know how much he's been suffering. I could wait longer.
The day that I become much more tolerant to sounds, resilient to uh, dynamic shifts, sonic shifts, the day that I become cured of hyperacusis. A lot of people have said, hey, you know, it's time to you know, join us in the restaurants again, Anthony. Let's go to the farmer's market. Let's go to, the, let's go to a theater. Let's go to a, maybe a small concert outdoor. That's all going to be later, much later. When I become cured of hyperacusis, there's one thing I've got to do first, and that is to be there, and I want to use the term minister to other people with hyperacusis.